All right. So here we have uh, just again, it's a extremely simple standard particle effect. Um, there's really nothing special going on here, and it's a it's a good start. Okay. So um, so let's start there. So the first thing you want to do is. Um, in general, you want to have an effects folder. So what I do is in my content folder, I create um, a, a effects folder. Um, you can name it effects, you know, E-F-F-E-C-T-S, or if you want to make it short, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's just a folder name. Um, but in general, I like to keep all of my particle effects in one folder. Um, then again, you can organize it how you want. But for now, let's just go ahead and create um, a particle effects folder. So go ahead and do that in your project folder and uh, we'll start from there. Um, inside of my particle effects I generally make a textures folder and that's where I'm going to keep things like my you know animation sequence or you know all these other different pieces that I might need. Um, and these are just textures that we're going to use for cards and stuff like that. Okay so generally I like to make that textures folder as well right before I even start making my particles. Um, even if there's nothing in there I just like to have my organization set up. Okay so that said um, let's go ahead and start with our first particle. Okay, so in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go right click and I'm going to go create and I'm going to go particle. Okay, and this is how you create any standard particle um, or any particle effect system period. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that and we're going to call this um, Sparks 2. Okay, um, you can name yours whatever you'd like, um, but I'm calling it Sparks 2. All right, and we're just going to emulate what I did here. Okay, so um, what you want to do is then just drag your particle effect onto your stage. Okay, and now you've got your particle effect living in your in your world. Um, now notice though that you're not really getting anything to happen here. Okay, so you've just got a box, and it's it's basically just sitting there, kind of glowing in its in its little glory. Um, so you want to make it start to do stuff. Um, and to make it do stuff, you're going to select the, the particle effect itself, and then over here on the right, you're going to see that you have a bunch of different parameters, okay? Um, you've got the, the, the particle effect replay system, which if you wanted to do it in asset preview, which you're perfectly welcome to do, um, you can hit replay and you will see that it, it actually starts playing your, your animation. And this is especially useful if you're doing burst animations, which is the only type that I'm not really doing. And that's only, all you would do is change your emitter rate from an emitter rate to emitter burst. Okay, and that's for things like a explosion that you want to trigger specifically. Um, which maybe I'll do something about that later, but for now let's just stick with uh, an emitter rate. Um, so hitting replay is just going to make it play and play and play. It'll never stop. It, it's it's just going to keep going. Um, and for emitter rates, I actually find that my level viewport is actually a better better viewing tool. Um, so I usually just drag it on stage, and then every time I make a change, I just hit the save icon, and I can see my changes as they go. Okay. So, um, but back to the particle effect. So what we're what, what what's happening here is. Right now we've got an emitter. It's making 10 particles a second because they're both set to 10. So we have a min and a max value. So, it, so it's making a minimum of 10 particles a second and a maximum of 10 particles a second, which means it's making 10 particles a second. But all we see is one dot. Okay. So what the problem is, is it's not doing anything. It's just sitting still. So it's just creating one dot over the next, over the next, over the next. And it's not actually doing anything. So what we want to do is make it do something. So the first thing that I like to do is I usually give it something of a speed. So we can either use a velocity or in this case, we're going to, we're going to use an acceleration and we're going to use gravity. Okay. And as soon as I hit gravity, you're going to see that we start getting something to happen. Okay. So those particles are now doing something. Okay, now um, we don't want ours to go down, we want ours to go up. So let's go ahead and give this a positive value of something like 1.5. And let's see what that looks like. So with a 1.5, we're starting to get a nice speed out of it. Um, but what we're still getting the problem of is that we have a lot of them overlapping and kind of not really looking very good. Um, so there's a couple ways we can solve that. We can give it more speed, right? If we were to give it more speed, something like a 9 in our gravity, um, you'll see that we start to get them to, to, to do a little more, right? Like they're, they're now separating, okay? So, but, but we don't really need that much speed. What we really want is to put that back down to 1.5 
And what we're going to do is we're going to give it some different positioning across the uh, box that it lives in. Okay, so let's go ahead and go add position int and we want to go box. So this is kind of like where am I going to be born from? And we're going to, instead of having it born in one point, we're going to have it born within the size of a box. Okay, so let's go ahead and say position box and let's hit save. And you'll see immediately that you start to get this kind of wild, um, you know, pattern of, of, of particles. Um, and that's going to be a lot more like what we want. Now, this uh, box minimum and box maximum, uh, that's basically like, I guess the easiest way to describe it would be saying, defining the two points, two corners of a, a, a cube. So if we have, you know, the box minimum is going to be this point right down here. And the box maximum is going to be this point up here. And then the box is kind of just defined from those two points because it's always a cube. So therefore the sides are always going to be the same. So the farther away these two points are, um, the, the bigger the box is going to be. And it's not really a cube, it's a rectangular cube. Um, so because we can, we can make it not necessarily square uh, on all sides. So, um, so on our box minimum, let's just lower that down. Um, and let's put that to something like negative 0.25, negative 0.25, negative 0.25. And that's where it's make the box maximum, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0.25. And now we're going to have a smaller box that these are being born within. All right? So, uh, so that's just how you kind of control this. Now, um, if you didn't want it to be so tall, like you didn't have them being born up and down as well, you could set this both to zero, oops, and zero. And now what you're basically doing is you know, crushing that box uh, vertically. So now you're only being born across a, a parallel plane or a, a flat plane. Um, you can also make it so that you only have a positive value by putting this to one. And now you'll see that they're only born above that line. So I'm just kind of showing you how this system works. Um, generally speaking, I usually leave the Z at zero. Um, again, depending on what you're doing. Um, but most of the time, I, I want them just kind of controlled in that regard. Uh, so I, all I want is like the kind of spacing around the outside, right? So it's like a XY um, spacing, not a Z spacing. Um, but again, that's very much up to you. You now know how to use the box uh, position controller. So, um, so yeah. So now we have them kind of doing what we want, right? We're starting to get that that look of what we've got over here. Um, but we're still not getting that movement, right? We want to get that movement going. Okay. So let's just go back into our particle, and let's go ahead and say uh, right click, and then let's go. Um, position control and we're going to go spiral okay and as soon as we add the spiral we're going to start to see something happening here so the only the the, the, the one value that we don't have is this speed so let's go ahead and give it some speed so let's give it a mi minimum of zero and a maximum of 10 let's say and let's just see what that does it's probably going to be wild nope that's actually looking pretty good okay so we're getting kind of that little spirally motion that we were getting out of this guy over here um, and let's go ahead and uh, increase the amount that it can rotate. So let's set the minimum to 90 and let's set the maximum to 180 degrees. And let's hit save. And now we'll see that we're starting to get a little more variation. So anytime you, you change the range of this min and max, uh, you'll, you'll have more variation in your particles. Um, it's basically like a randomization function that is saying, the, the slowest I want my particles to rotate is 90, and the fastest I want them to uh, rotate is 180. And each particle that is born will be born within those two ranges. Okay, um, so you'll see that a lot throughout this particle system, um, you know, anywhere in here. So like a lot of things have this min-max concept, um, and it's really kind of important to grasp. Um, it's not too hard, but uh, yeah, you'll get it. Um, so I'm going to set this now to 360 and see if I can increase that variance range a little bit. And now I should start to get what I want. Some of them are going a little too fast, though. Um, maybe not so problematic, though. 
I mean, a volcano has a lot of kind of movement and there's a lot of stuff happening inside of a volcano, so I don't mind that they're moving a little erratically. Uh, so I think I kind of like that. Um, and that's going to be pretty much uh, pretty much it for the for the spiral. Um, now what we're going to want to do is kind of control this size because those those particles are looking pretty big. Um, so to me they're they're just too big. So what I want to do is I'm I'm going to again use this min max concept and I'm going to set my my minimum size to something like 0 0.025 and my maximum size is going to be something like point uh, Oh, 08 I think will be probably pretty good. So let's go ahead and try that out. And now again, you can see that some of them are being born small, some of them are being born big, and we kind of have that nice variation in our particle. Um, I think the large sizes are still a little bit too big, so I'm going to go 0.05, and I'm going to hit save, and take a look at how that feels. And that feels pretty good. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to want to do is just increase um, my speed a little more. It's it's not really going up as high as I'd like it to. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not going to change the speed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the lifetime because I didn't get into this yet, and it's kind of important. Okay, so um, here what you have is the controls that are like kind of like the overarching controls of your particle effect. Um, we can do things in here like change our system name, so if I wanted to name this Sparks, I could, uh, which will become more important when you have multiple particle effects within one particle effect. So the, each one of these can have systems, so like right now we've got a system called Sparks. I could add another system, and it would be a whole other set of particles that exist here. We're not going to get into that yet, but I'm just kind of showing you that you can name them, and that can be useful. Um, now, your particle life is your next important thing. Now, this is how long your particle will survive. So if we were to set this to something like 100, right, and I believe this counts in seconds, um, you'll see that our particles are going to go way up in the air. See how long they live? Okay. So, um, but you'll notice now that, well, what happened? Why are there not any more being born? Well, you created, um, in our emitter rate, we've created 10 particles, okay? But our uh, total number of particles created is all only allowed to be 10, okay? So even though this is making 10 per second, this is saying, oh, well, you're only allowed to make 10. And since we gave it such a long particle life, there now aren't enough total to allow for that to happen. So basically, those particles are still alive. Those initial 10 were born, and they're still alive. They're still floating, like, way up in space. Um, so... So just be aware that this total will limit the amount of particles that you're allowed to have in a system. So if you ever come to a point where you're like, why am I not seeing particles, or why are my particles like being erratic, uh, check this this total, because it can, it can kind of mess you up sometimes. Um, it's also a very useful limiter, um, so just be aware of that too, because sometimes you don't necessarily want your particles to overwhelmingly create particles. So you can use this as kind of like a de facto limiter, um, which can be used for performance gains. Um, it can also be used for, uh, for you know, all sorts of controls. Um, so just something relatively useful to know. All right, so now you can see that we're getting a more consistent stream, but now I have a thousand particles on stage living at a time. Okay, so, um, so anyway, so, so that's how you're going to control your, your lifetimes. Um, now, this particle life, another, you know, I don't want it that long, so let's go something more like uh, between 2 and 5, and now uh, that 1,000 will never even be encroached upon, um, but that's okay. Uh, so now we're at eh, 2 and 5 is still too long, let's do something more like 1 and 2, and that should be a little better, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, between 1 and 2 seconds they live now. And, um, so what else do we need? Uh, that's pretty much it. So, okay, so let's go into our emitter rate, and let's kind of play with that a little bit. So right now what we're getting is a very consistent stream of particles. Um, and what I'd like to do is not necessarily have those particles um, be so constant, right? Like in a fire, you're going to have this kind of erratic 
quality of how the particles are going to be born. Sometimes they're going to spark, sometimes they're not. Um, so, so yeah. So we want to kind of make that a little more random. So again, we're going to use this very simple randomization function by going from you know a minimum of one per second and a maximum of ten per seconds. And when I hit save, you'll see that we now have a bit more of an erratic kind of uh, birthing process. Okay, sometimes there's little gaps, sometimes there's not. You know, it just makes it feel a lot more natural and believable. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is, um, well, I want to get rid of this material billboard. This is an unnecessary for us on this particle because we're not actually going to be putting any kind of like cards over it. Uh, so for a standard particle effect, I always just get rid of this guy. Um, that just gets rid of it, and it's it's just not necessary. So no reason to keep it. Um, so we've got our emitter rate, we've got our size, and one thing that I always like to do is kind of control the size of the particles over time. Um, and and this particle scale is really good for that. So for this type of a particle, I would basically want it to diminish over time. So it's going to become smaller and smaller as the time goes further on. Um, so I'm just going to drag this little guy down, and you'll see these graphs all over the place in, in Stingray. I mean, in um, the particle effect system of Stingray. So uh, so it's just a really useful little uh, graphing tool. And basically, what zero is is the birth of the particle, and one is the death of the particle. So from the birth point, it's going to stay at normal size, and it's going to go down to um, you know basically non-existent or a scale of zero uh, at at the death of the particle okay and if we hit save we'll see that it slowly just takes those particles and makes them nice and small now as you can see they're getting too small too quickly so we can go ahead and add another little point here and just kind of like you know gradiate it at the end uh, so we're going to kind of keep it almost the full size and we're just going to kind of like drop it off toward the end um, and if we hit save, we should see that that feels a lot better now. So yeah, that feels pretty good to me. Okay, so the next thing is going to be our color. Um, right now we have a pretty simple color. It's white. Um, what we want to do is have it gradiate over time. Again, uh, the left side is going to be your birth, and the right side is going to be your death. So if we slide this guy over to the left and double click it, and give it an, I don't know, a color of red, let's say, or a, a nice burnt dark red, reddish orange. So if we go into the ring color, let's go ahead and make it like a nice dark brownish red. Um, and let's add another little point here. And let's make that one like a middle orange. And let's add a third color. And let's make that a bright whitish yellow. Right, like a real nice bright white yellow. Um, maybe even a little more white than that is what I was thinking. So this is a little weird thing. Uh, if you click on the ring, it just doesn't work. So click Spect and then Ring, and then you can get the ring to show. So uh, just something I've noticed. I'm actually going to issue a bug report about that. Okay. So um, so here we go. And if I hit OK, you should see a nice a nice gradient um, emerge. And when we do it in our particles, you'll see that we get this nice uh, gradient over time. Towards the top, they're becoming that nice yellowish quality right at the tip. And at the bottom, they're dark orange, and they're kind of gradiating through. All right? So, uh, so that's going to pretty much wrap up the standard simple particle effects. Um, there's a lot more you can do with these. Okay? You can go crazy. Um, you can add all sorts of different things. I mean, Anything you want to do in here, you can try and play with. Um, I recommend it on these simple particles because you can you can really see their effect easily, and it doesn't you know it's not hard to do, and you can do all sorts of things like add velocities or you know um, I wouldn't do a spawn trail yet. Wait until we that's going to be what we do later. Um, but you can do size by life, size by variable. You can do rotations. You can do all sorts of different things in here. Um, but this gets you started with your, your particle effects, okay? Um, and uh, that's it, all right?